out there. I can feel you now. I know that you're afraid. You're afraid of us. You're afraid of change. I don't know the future. I didn't come here to tell you how this is going to end. I came to tell you how it's going to begin. I'm going to hang up this phone and then I'm going to show these people what you don't want them to see. A world where anything is possible. Where we go from there is a choice I leave to you. All right, folks, um, this is something that has been bothering me for a while. And I had gone back and forth about whether to do a response to this. And normally I wouldn't respond to uh, Sergeant Willie Pete. I listen to him all the time. But the thing is, I very seldom respond unless it's something that bothers me. And uh, for this particular instance, he's kind of called me out. And so, you know, we're going to do an old fashioned response. Um, I think this he calls this, uh, this video, he calls uh, black men and money again. OK. So, you know, we're going to go through it and do an old fashioned call and response or is uh, driver's it calls it a play by play uh, to go ahead and get this out of the way. Because uh, it's been like I said, it's been on my mind. So uh, I've heard parts of it because uh, Sergeant Willie P tends to repeat himself a lot and he's kind of long winded. So uh, so buckle up, you know. If you don't like a long response videos, it's too long. Don't read. So this is not a eh, not really a shot at Sergeant Willie P. Just a disagreement. You know, he's my favorite curmudgeon. And uh, Edward, you know, Edward has said that and he agrees with him. So we'll we'll see. You know, like I said, I haven't listened to the whole thing. Maybe I should have before I responded. But what, we're going to do this off the dome and see how it goes. Anyhow, let us begin. Johnson's uh, room and he was talking about Kevin Samuel's death and you know shout out to the brothers that you know acknowledge me in the room Dr. T. Hassan Johnson acknowledged me you know uh, you know I appreciate the, the 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 thanks and the keep doing what you're doing and the support and all that other stuff now with that said I'm gonna have to criticize and this isn't directed at anyone in particular but I'm gonna have to criticize brothers because you all are just as scramble brained as the women. Okay. Here we go. Hey, you come on and you're talking about the matriarchy, the gynocracy, and all that stuff. All the stuff that we're aware of, we know what goes goes on with that. The women want to run shit, the boss bitch, you know, they don't have any respect for black men, misandry, there's a deep seated contempt, and all that stuff, right? Moving past that. But you guys point out the matriarchy and and, uh, you know, how boys are raising the matriarchy and everything. And you guys don't recognize that you uh, have these matriarchal beliefs within yourself. And it everybody knows that that's how can we hear. OK, everybody knows uh, that we have these matriarchal beliefs in us in us because we're raised that way. We're cultured that way. So right there, right there, you're wrong. You know it, we know it, I know it, because that's what's wrong with you. We're socialized in a matriarchy, otherwise it wouldn't be what? A matriarchy. If it wasn't embedded in us, it wouldn't be a matriarchy. Why do you think all these people in the black manosphere are here? Because they know what's going on. Continuing. It happens every time we get to talking about the money. You guys keep trying to present the, the spiritualness and, you know, all this sort of virtue signaling and, you know, there's other ways to define manhood and be a man. And it's not about what you produce and it's not about what you provide and all that. Right. And that all that's going to lead is right into the area of why black women should respect you in the first place. They should respect you in the first place because you're a goddamn human being. Right. Um, I, I've said it before. I can go down to Guatemala. Get a. 
a Hispanic woman, a Guatemalan woman out of a tin shack, dirt poor, has more respect for her men, more respect for her man, and more, more respect for herself than a black woman that's middle class. It's not about the money. It's about how you're raised and how you're cultured. I got, you know, I'm, I work across the street, down the street from a liquor store, right? And you have a, 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 a girl, a woman, and her boyfriend, right? They both work in the same liquor store. She has way more respect for him. And he's not rich. He's working the same job she is. Same uh, working class job that, that she is. And guess what? She shows him way more respect than black women that have uh, degrees. Show a guy with a degree. So it, it's not about the money. Structure. Continuing. You guys want to be intrinsically valued and it doesn't work like that. Not when you're talking about patriarchy. Now, if you want to talk about some other uh, system, which is what the feminists are talking about, they're like, we don't want patriarchy. Right. And they try to present this pseudo fake ass, you know, feminism, egalitarianism, which, which does agree already. <laughs> it already exists. We're going to one of these days, we're going to have to have you define what a, a freaking patriarchy is right from the ground up. Because you talk about it and you throw it around about a patriarchy. And basically, a patriarchy has a structure, a solid structure. You're a scientist. You know about structure. You know about being precise. And you're not precise. What we call a patriarchy, a white patriarchy, really hasn't existed since uh, 1836. Okay? With the 10 years doctrine. Okay? The, the patriarchy... What, what, what we, we try to pretend, the feminists try to pretend that we still have a patriarchy and they define it by uh, who's in charge or who has positions, which really doesn't matter because your patriarchy died 200 years ago, 150 years ago. And we still try to cling on to it because the, how we handle our women is not the same way we handle uh, that Koreans handle their women or uh, Arabs handle, handle their their women. Okay. Patriarchy means that the women and children belong to you. OK, we don't have any control of the children. If we don't have control of the children, this is not a patriarchy, sir. Even with white people. Why do you think all these MRAs are getting their ass handed to them? And we talk about white boys getting their ass handed to them by their women because it's not a patriarchy anymore. Where at the end of the day, it's, it's just going to look like male responsibilities, devoid of leadership and women have the final say. That's ultimately what they want, because obviously that would benefit women. But you all act come in the room and you guys act like you want it to be 50 50 egalitarian and you want to be valued in some other way. And it shouldn't be about how you produce and provide and everything else. And then you turn around and you act like you want to be respected like other races of men are respected. And it doesn't work like that. Of course, it doesn't work like that. It has nothing to do with money. Now, no, there's no black man that worked any harder or slaved any harder than the black man in America. And our women still treat us the same. It's because the structure of how uh, our soul, our culture was actually embedded in us. You have black men working themselves to death in this society. On farms. Uh, uh, in, in, in suburbs. OK. In urban areas working themselves to death and basically what it came down to it's not it is it has nothing to do with the jobs okay it's how how you are socialized and how your culture is formed which makes a difference because trust and believe you go down to latin america where they don't have crap you don't see this it's not about the money you know even even i have gotten on dr t son johnson about this in, in in the past and he did acknowledge my comment because i i don't know what it is about a lot of brothers where they have this disconnect where when we have conversations about money, y'all want to sit there and talk about, oh, I'm looking at my third eye, serve the most high. I got the sweet twinkle of white Jesus in my. I don't know who you're talking to, man. You can't mix people up. OK, I don't know who you're talking to. If you're going out on the corner and you're talking to uh, those so-called Hotep conscious brothers, you're going to hear that. But you're not going to hear that from regular working class people, working class guys. OK, you don't hear that. That's a very small percentage of people. So you so stop beatboxing and mixing up people together. OK, I am from the conscious community. I have heard that talk. So just like uh, you, you like Amos Wilson and people of that ilk. OK, they're part of the conscious community. They they say some of the same things. But guess what? Those are the people that you follow. The people, the people that you uh, read books from. Right. Same community, different outlook. I, that's what y'all want to talk about. As soon as we get the money. 
Y'all want to talk about there's other ways of my manhood being uh, measured. But then when we get to the actual problems in the black community that can only be solved with resources, right? Then, then, then all of a sudden you guys are like, oh, my brothers are dropping out of college and I don't know why. And then and BGSIB more responded to me and he would try to talk. It starts at the root and it starts at some, you know, some other point and in childhood and, you know, behavioral problems. This is what it does start at the root. It does start in childhood. It does start. It actually starts at age three. OK, how many studies do you have to read or how many studies have you read about children, uh, black children being behind even before they get to kindergarten? How many boys have to go to special ed? How many uh, uh, prejudiced teachers do boys have to walk through, walk that gauntlet through? How many times do we have to show studies where, where uh, con con uh, Kanjufu showed it? OK, there's a, there's a way that you can actually get uh, make black boys successful in being and going to college and finishing college. They proved that with uh, boys schools, with all male schools for, for black boys, with an education just for black boys. Nin with 98 percent of them, 99 percent of them actually graduate from high school and 90 percent go to college because they're prepared. It does start at an earlier age. The earlier, the better. Look at any other place in the world, right? Where do they start their kids? They don't start their kids in high school. They start their kids in, in, in kindergarten. They start these kids in preschool. Go back and read the book of Battle Handle the Tiger Mom. Been doing this too long, Chief. Been doing this too long, Chief. Started learning that before you were born. What you all sound like? You all sound like white people. Because, and why do I say that you all sound like white people? Because it's precisely what white people do. Right. We want to talk about reparations for slavery. We want to talk about tangibles as, you know, uh, uh, Professor Black Truth talks about. We talk about that. And what do white people do? They, they dodge the money part. They start talking about, oh, well, you know, you just need the sweet twinkle of Christ in your eye. And it's about morality and it's about behavior. It is about behavior. OK, I don't know where you get the sweet tinkle of Christ in your eye. I don't know why you keep mixing in religion and behavior. Which, bu which bugs the shit out of me. I don't know where you get that from. Have you ever read a book on how uh, culture is actually formulated? Have you read uh, uh, books on how uh, other poor populations actually um, uh, start their, uh, raise their children, raise the profile of their whole country, the economic profile of the whole country? Mao knew better. Mao started with what? Mao started with the children. Any successful child, you can always trace back to their uh, beginnings back when they were children back to, to, to how either a teacher or a parent actually set them on the path most successful children that go to college and finish college have guess what college educated parents because it starts early we i did story i've did stories on uh from judgy bitch that actually compared a black mother to a white mother black boys that are raised by a white mother believe it or not do just as well as white people regardless of income Regardless of income, uh, half your boys, half your men, regardless of where they start, fall back to the lower classes. Had nothing to do with money. Continuing. And behavioral modifications, and it's all about this. Nobody is saying that that's not important. But you guys always try to over use that to overshadow the money aspect. Nobody ever said, nobody's ever trying to overshadow the money aspect. That's you. Uh, wanting to be right. That's all it is. Resources are important. Resources are important. And everybody always talks about what about the money? The, you know what? And this is uh, something that I talked to a, a, a teacher in Philadelphia where, where you hailed from. This is back in 2007. And this is where this is where knowledge comes in. Knowledge, in fact, uh, knowledge is power. Knowledge is way more important than money. I don't know if you know that knowledge is way more important than money. If you have the knowledge, you'll get the money. Preparing your children is way more important than the money. How do you think we came out of slavery? Did we have money when we came out of slavery? How do you think we did that? How do you think the, the bourgeoisie got to be a bourgeoisie class? They didn't they didn't get it because they were rich or they uh, came from rich families. They get they got it through education. They got it through knowledge. But I'll give you this example. This is this is what 2007. This got to be 15 years ago. Uh, the, the city of Philadelphia is spending $21,000 per student. Resources are there. So how come you're getting poor results with black kids and black boys especially? It's not about the money, but how the money's allocated. 
It's about who their mother is. It's about the programs that you implement. The money's already there. You have to beg for the money. Money's already there. If you can spend sixty, seventy thousand dollars to send a man to prison, you can spend ten thousand dollars to teach seven kids. It's not about the money. Money's already there. We send him thirty billion dollars over there to what? O over there to fight, uh, help Ukraine fight. Okay, it's not about the money. It's how it's the allocation of resources, and it's about who actually wills resources, who's in, in charge, because you're going to have, uh, what is it, a fool in his money is, is soon parted. You can't put corrupt, foolish people in charge of the money, in charge of the resources. You can't give kids uneducated parents or kid parents that don't care and give them a check. Anyway, continuing. And it's the same thing that the system of white supremacy does. Oh, black guy, you should be able to do with three dollars what it takes me twenty dollars to do with. And if you can't do it, shame on you. You didn't pull yourselves up by the bootstraps. You're not working hard enough. You don't have enough personal conviction. You know, unlike us good white folks, because we're just some hard workers. Right. Like that's what that's what they come with. And so and so you as black men, you do the same thing to yourself. As soon as we start talking about power, you know, uh, 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 resources, economics, opportunity, business opportunities, job opportunities, and the actual goal behind obtaining those things, which ultimately is power, you guys start sounding like, actually, I can't even say you sound like a bunch of women, but you sound like a bunch of men raised exclusively by women. That's bullshit. Okay. That's bullshit. And guess who? <laughs> guess who's raised in a matriarchy sir that's who you sound like you sound emotional you haven't you haven't given one uh solid idea one credible one credible idea one credible structural idea okay you argue with me when i said it starts at an earlier rate 70 percent of black boys flunk out of college because they're not prepared to be there freshman year because they're not prepared to be there. Money is secondary. Money is secondary. Where you go to school means something. Why do you think that is? Resources have to be allocated earlier. And if you can't do resources, then you're going to have the parents can do it. There's resources. It's called the Internet. So the parents can do it. Back then, you had libraries. If the parent is parents are focused. On making sure that child succeeds, the child will succeed. So is, 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 is our resources important? Yeah, if you don't have books, you can't read. But how you allocate and use those resources is probably as important, if not more important than the resources themselves. You, you, you taught a whole lot of kids on meager resources. The whole lot of kids came out of one room uh, country schoolhouses with meager resources. Why? Because the people cared. The people and the parents cared. Continuing. Because when 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 you hear black women having conversations, I'm saying regardless of how delusional it is, regardless of how how much, you know, it, we know it doesn't increase their value in the sexual marketplace. The, the, it, it, it's so obvious that the black community has been role reversed. You got black men over here talking about being intrinsically valued. Right. You know, just valued for existing. And then you got the women talking about how they got six figures and they a boss bitch. And even when they're not a boss bitch, they're a boss bitch. And, 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 and there's always this this aspiration to achieve and obtain more access to uh, wealth and resources. And how, where, where has that got them or the black community? Huh? Speak on it. Where has that gotten them in the black community? The reason that they have anything that they could cheat anything is because you had millions of black men burn down goddamn cities in night between 1965 and 1968. That's why you got what you got. Go back and read the freaking Kerner Commission. We did. That's why you got it. You didn't get it for nothing. You didn't get it for nothing. And then they, what did they do? They allowed white women to steal the resources from you. So it, it really isn't it really not about the money. They're they're waving it in, in your faces, even though they don't have it. And guess what? Even at that, guess who have more resources and more money and more clout than they do? It's called black men. It hasn't done them any good, has it? Has it, sir? When you when, when women are in their space and talking about female empowerment. Black men, on the other hand, you all are, are talking about 
uh, you know, uh, being being valued spiritually and all this metaphysical bull bullshit, man. I don't know where you get that from. Go listen to evidently you haven't listened to black women. Evidently you haven't listened to them. That's the first thing they talk about: spirituality, feelingness, being valued intrinsically, what they bring to ta to the table. Okay. You do you have a few of them trying to wave their six figures in their job in your face? Sure. The vast majority of them don't. They line up on Kevin Samuel's channel. You see them waving their six figure jobs in, in faces. They think they're supposed to get what they get just for existing. That's like 90 percent of them. So I don't know what you're reading, man. You reach. I'm not going to say that. I'm going to keep calm. Continuing. Bullshit. You know, you, you, you out there on some hotep shit, some black Israelite shit. You know, where, where, where again, you know, again, you got other other countries, other nations, thermonuclear weapons, God particles, Hadron Collider, smashing particles together, putting satellites in orbit, you know, claiming celestial bodies. You know what I'm saying? Trying to land on Mars. And you all are, are arguing over who serves which which black man is a godly man. The same country that put that uh, put together Hadron Collider's sends rockets to mars put a man on the moon and all that kind of stuff are we all part of the same society black people do not live in some other black land all by themselves you're all part of the same society capitalism was built on our backs capitalism was actually modeled after the slave plantation most of that stuff uh, most of the wealth that america accrued was on our backs even uh, up until 1963 okay a black a black man uh, actually put together the IP addresses for the Internet, amongst other things. You wouldn't have half the stuff if black people hadn't invented it. So just like they do it, we do it. America would not be America without black people. In fact, Europe would not be Europe without black people. So let's not get it twisted. I don't know where y'all get get off that uh, r other races of men. Other races of men are basically just like anybody else. OK, it's where they come from. It's where they come from. Look at the Ukraine. You think you think they, they, they're they counting race over there. They're counting as peoples. Right. Where you come from. Black men, uh, are, the Nato's black men are part of America from the very beginning. We're actually created by America. We are part of America just like everybody else. So when. They send rockets to the moon or they send uh, nuclear weapons wherever they send them. Guess what? You're a part of that. There is no separation. There is no integration. You've already been integrated. OK, assimilation and integration are two th different things. Right. They want to assimilate. You. You've been integrated since the very beginning. Now, you might not like your place in the society. You might not like your place in society. But thing is, you're a part of this country. So other races of men does doesn't mean anything. You got poor ass white people in the middle of nowhere. Don't have no nuclear weapons. They're poor as shit. You have Asian countries that are, that are still uh, eating rice uh, out of mud bowls. OK, the vast majority of India is piss poor. They don't even have running water or toilets. So don't talk about other races of men. It's not about race. OK. Black men in America, eight of those black men are part of the society. So talking about nuclear weapons, Hadron Colliders, we're just as part of that as anybody else. So don't get it twisted. Continuing. Serves the most high. That ain't going to get you no goddamn power. You know, for further evidence, I direct you to the condition of black people over the last 2000 years. Half your... Half your nuclear physicists, okay, that are on the Hadron Collider are either what? Jewish, Jewish Kabbalist, esoteric Christians, which are Masons, and some of them are Buddhist. That's what they are. They believe in the Most High. The God particle, why do you think they call it the God particle? They're not atheists. Most scientists are not atheists. Most of your high level technicians, most of your high level scientists are not atheists. They're religious. They believe in the Most High. I don't know where you get that shit from. Either God hates black people, you know, it isn't listening to black people or is indifferent to black people. So why are you wasting your time? And, and, and that whole religious component spills over into this bullshit combined with the matriarchal aspect. Because you know how black women love the church and feelings and everything else like that. They 
So why are they on top? If with black, it, it can't be two different separate things. If black women are, are talking about money and talking about their education and waving it in your face, and they believe in spirituality more than you, maybe you need to believe in it the same as them. It's not a competition. They got their own retarded shit. Because then when you try to tell, when you try to tell, you know, the women defined by men, you know, how they're perceived or how they're valued and everything, they don't want to hear it. Then they also want to get spiritual. Even Oh, I thought they weren't spiritual. Huh. I thought they weren't spiritual. Oh my goodness. Huh. Anyway, continuing. No, they have defined themselves by their careers and we're so educated and we got degrees. Ignore all the debt that we have, but you know Oh, wait a minute. Huh. 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 Ignore all the debt. So so basically they're as delusional as the men are according to you which one is it pick a struggle sergeant willie pick a struggle we got where we got degrees and meanwhile on the other side you got black men believing in their own hype you know being sex gods and man dingoes and swagnificent and everything is about you know the pussy you know like like that's literally uh, where black men are that's how you socialize. It's called CompuServe. But guess what? Guess what? What they're looking for now? They're looking for what? A six-figure dude. You see black women taking care of black men that are, that are swagnificent or mandingos? Do you see that? What are they looking for? I'm looking for a working-class guy or looking for a, a man with money, the ones that do get married. They've been saying that for years. What have black women been complaining about for years? What have they been complaining about? Well, how come we can't get married, which is bullshit? We can't get married because there's not enough black men that are uh, economically viable. They give you the same spiel, the same bullshit for the last 70 years. The same exact thing, right? Probably longer than that because it goes all the way back to uh, Philadelphia Negro, which I'm sure you read by W.E. Du Bois. Shit hasn't changed. Okay? It ain't about the money, chief. Every time we have a conversation about money or power, there's always a bunch of brothers that will call in these shows. And I know because I dealt with it freaking over a decade ago. They will call in these shows and start talking about how the, how black men can be valued in other ways. Look, we understand it's a capitalist society. There's stratifications. There's people that's going to make a lot of money. There's people that's not going to make so much money. But you have to establish a standard. This, this 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 crap that 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 all men are valuable and the man making twenty five thousand dollars a year is equally as valuable as the man making, you know, uh, two hundred thousand dollars. And we don't believe that. OK, you don't believe it. The men are making two hundred thousand dollars. You don't believe it. And the women don't believe it. Nobody believes it. OK, you believe in the rhetoric that's that from a certain amount of people. OK, that don't have it. They know it. Because guess what they try to swag off with? Their ride, their clothes, and whatever. Come on, man. This year is bullshit. It's a lie. It, I don't know where you all get this. And if you have that type of mentality where you don't have cutoffs, there's no way for you to compete in the global marketplace against other races of men. Other races of men don't compete in the goddamn global marketplace, okay? It's not about race. OK, societies compete in the global marketplace. Guess who the biggest winner is in the United is the United States. Uh, basically, you could take any other race, in any other country. Ninety percent of the countries don't live as well as you do. I don't care what race of man he is, whether he's Latino, whether he's Asian, whether whatever he is. You got poor Bedouins in the Middle East don't live as well as you do. You got white people don't live as well as you do. It has nothing to do with it. Societies compete in the global marketplace. Races of people do not. Races of people do not. Societies compete in a global marketplace. Look at Russia. If you, you would rather live in the ghetto in the United States than live in Soviet Russia after the fall, after 1989, really after 1985. You would you would live a much better life if you lived in America. And those people are lily white. You would much rather live in the United States. In the middle of Philadelphia, and when you live in a village in the Ukraine, and those people are lily white, you much rather live in the United States than live in Greece. Some people are white. Societies, countries compete in the global marketplace, not races. Stop trying to give that same bullshit rhetoric. Okay, you're fucking, you're a fucking American. Okay, 
When you take your blue passport and you leave this country, you can fly to any place in the, else in the world. Once you start speaking English and show your passport, you're an American. You're not a race of man. They don't look at you that way. You look at yourself that way because because you're a low caste inside the society. Other places you go don't care about that shit. Who don't operate like that. We are in dead last place. And, 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 and yet and still over a decade later, black men are still sitting around talking like this. A decade later. That's the best you can do. Ten years. That's all. Boss, I've been in this game 40 years. I've been in this game 40 years. The bullshit that you hear you talking about, I done heard like 15 times over. In fact, I was I was talking to one of my subs. Talk about the goddamn LaRouche group. Okay? Talk about the LaRouche group. Now, for the people, old school people that have been around in the 80s and maybe the early 90s, then you know about the uh, Lyndon LaRouche and his group, right? Uh Right wing progressives. I would that's probably where I put them at. Right wing progressives. I was he was showing me that. I told him, man, I quit the LaRouche group 30 years ago. 30 years ago. Man, you were you were weren't even middle school when we were talking about this. And you have the nerve to actually talk about me. Man, I man, I've been doing geopolitics for the last 25 years. Okay. Last 25 years, I can I introduced more concepts to this environment, to this manosphere than you have in 15. You talk about the same shit. It ain't about the money. You talked about the sweet tinkle, uh, twinkle of Jesus in your eye. Right. Uh, I, I, I'm a Gnostic. Right. <laughs> OK. I'm a I'm a hardcore uh, black pill Gnostic about about uh, devoid of morality about the structure of not only the universe but also the structure of society that's what i deal in you know i was listening to john mearsheimer right he's he's a famous uh geopoliticist out of the university of chicago word what comes out of his mouth is word for word almost the same thing that i said and, and you talk about a sweet twinkle of genius we ain't never talked religion if you want to talk hardcore money we can because I know, sir, you don't understand it. You don't understand shit. By the way, you're talking uh, uh, other races of men. It's not a race, sir. Societies and race will be irrelevant in 20 years anyway. It almost is. If you really want to talk about white people, white people are barely holding on to their to their place as far as the race is concerned. Civilizations and societies are what trade. You don't trade by race. You trade by country. You trade by society. You trade by blocks. Anyway, continuing. And, 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 and it says to, it says to me that these conversations are fruitless. They're fruitless because even if you could talk about black women and their behavior and everything, even if, OK, wait the magic wand, black women change their behavior and they're supportive and all that other shit. All you're going to have a dude that's sitting up there saying is I bag groceries at the grocery store and a woman should get with me, even though I don't have the resources to really comfortably support a family. Yeah, she should. Just like every other immigrant that comes to this country. A, 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 a black immigrant that comes to this country uh, that barely gets scrapes over here, puts his kids in school and drives fucking cabs. OK. And his mama, his, 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 his wife stays home and they scrape together meals so that their kids can have a better future. It happens all the time. What the fuck are you talking about? Everybody don't uh, come in uh, in a middle class lifestyle. OK. The median earnings, the last median earnings look that I had from the Social Security, I think it was 2020. It might have been 20, 2020, 2020, 2021 is not yet, out yet, right? The median earnings of all Americans, I'm not just talking about black Americans, all Americans, is $33,000 a year. It's probably going to go lower. Median earnings, so half of America earns less than $33,000 a year. They can do it. How come we can't? They can do it. How come we can't? They're not comfortable. They don't have to live a suburban middle class life to be successful. It happens all the time. How do you think you, how do you think people got to the middle class? You think everybody started in a middle class suburban lifestyle where Johnny, uh, where Johnny and Buffy and Jamal were driving BMWs or a car at all? Come on, man. Right. That's what you're going to have. Your son's not going to get a car because you can't afford to help him get a car. You know, your son's not going to get a laptop. Or, or 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 a decent cell phone or whatever because you can't afford him to help afford it to get him those things most kids basically bums have cell phones bums have cell phones you can get you can walk to any place in america you go to the, go to the neighborhood and you can get a cell phone cell phones the easiest way to easiest thing to get 
I walk into I walk into the where old folks shop. There's people lined up. You can get a free, free cell phone and free service. Come on, man. You don't need a laptop. We came we basically and this is what the scheme that we came up and it's really cheap. But the thing is, most people don't want to implement it. OK. And we came up with this. What? Uh, we fell this 15 years ago. Flip classroom, right? We came up with this because we had we because we wanted to find a way to actually uh, uh, basically educate kids in poor uh, poor countries with, with as little money as possible, right? And it's really really simple. Listen to this, Sergeant Willie Pete. If you want a strategy, you want a strategy as you improve things. Want a strategy? Listen, listen, listen. Okay, the average book budget for a, a kid in elementary school average book, book budget a kid in elementary uh per book is what so per books are 80 bucks that's five books okay five times 80 is 400 dollars. that's just the book budget that's minimum minimum book budget for a kid per year is at least five or six hundred dollars right you can get a kid a cheap tablet for 50 bucks Give him two, one for school and one for home. Put all the books on the tablet and a reader. You can give him internet for the whole year. You don't need a laptop. You don't need a decent laptop. All you need is a tablet. What do you think they did doing, uh, during um, uh, COVID? what they do? They gave them what? They gave them $100 Chromebooks to take home. They could actually go to the library or they, they can actually uh, give them away, actually provide internet. They did it for two years, for damn near two years under COVID. Under COVID lockdown, they can do it. There's plenty of money. The, the minimum uh, amount per student spent in a uh, school district is about $15,000 minimum. You can take a third of that budget, third of that school budget per year and give them a cheap tablet and give them Internet service. Done deal. They do it. They've done it in Africa. We, we, we called it uh, a containerized uh, we basically call it a, a classroom in a container, containerized classrooms. OK, where you give uh, you have you have 20 desk. I think it's 20. Yeah, I think it's like 20 desk, uh, 20 uh, cheap tablets. And you hook up a cellular service that's to give uh, Internet service to the to the container. And you put a teach, you put one teacher in it. You can get uh, remote learning. You can get any kind of book you want. You can get Internet, you can get YouTube, you can learn any kind of classroom curriculum you want it's, it's already been done it's easy to do okay that's cheap that's on the cheap that's that's the minimum that's just the resources that you already have using the resources that you have is what's important and the rest is the parents the structure of the uh, structure of the education the biggest problem with black boys is because it, there's no male influence in the classroom that's the biggest reason that black, black boys fail in, in school Male, no male influence that's been proven over and over and over again you can go back to uh uh the atlantic in uh, atlantic Mag magazine in 1912 right there was about four articles written about the feminization of the educational system and where white boys white boys were failing and dropping out of school and weren't going to college girls were doing better is because the way our school system is built the person in front of the class is the most important thing. So once you started changing the curriculum, because boys and girls learn differently, change the curriculum so that it emphasizes boys instead of girls, boys will succeed. OK, white boys started succeeding when they changed it. Right. And they did not start succeeding. Girls started getting the upper hand when they changed it back in 1972 under Title IX. But you don't mention that, sir, because it's all about the money to you. It's all about competing against who? Other races of men. If we wanted to make a sacrifice, we could send a whole bunch of black kids to Cuba for free or for very cheap. Send them to medical school. One parent sacrifices, go lives in Cuba, takes the kid or two kids over, get free medical education. You got a ton of doctors. Send your kid to Germany to go to school for free. Skid, there's several countries in, in, in Europe you can go to school for free. There's plenty of places in this country, in this world, you can send a kid to school for free. Kel, if you really want to go whole hog, you can send your kid, teach your kid Chinese. Send them to China. They'll go to school for free. Student exchange. It can be done. 
where there's a will there's a way it's not always about the money but that's called being creative you got to do the best with what you have you know what i mean other men are going to are going to look at your daughter like she's less than you know because of the whole aspect of of what that man would actually be marrying into because you don't just marry the person you marry the family you guys have no pedigree. You're not trying to establish legacies. You guys like throw around legacies and generational wealth and all that shit. You guys throw that around, right? Which, which ironically, you got uh, in large part from me. Bullshit. They were talking about generational wealth back in the 80s, sir. Okay. They didn't get it from you. Generational wealth was talked about in the 80s. Claude Anderson was talking about that in the 90s. Not Martin, Dr. Martin, what do you think Dr. Martin Luther King was talking about when he said, I'm coming to get the check, okay? And how generational wealth was actually acquired not only from land grants, uh, from uh, 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 from immigrants, but also the GI Bill. Where I don't think you were born in the, in, the, in the 60s, if I'm not mistaken, okay? I don't think you're quite that old yet. I think you're a millennial. So I don't think you were born, but you claiming that generational wealth came from where'd you hear it from? Generational wealth has been around a long time from a lot of economists, including Dr. Martin Luther King and before him. So I don't know where you I don't understand you uh, uh, 1.0 guys, man. You guys think that all the ideas just floated into your head out of the ether and you guys had the original ideas. Come on, man. Anyway, continuing. You guys just throw that around all willy nilly. And as one of the pioneers, as one of the originators of these discussions on YouTube, it is highly irritating to hear you guys bastardize the core message, uh, uh, you know, uh, you know, of these conversations. Well, sir, you can always show up and have a conversation because what you're saying is bullshit. OK, what you're saying is bullshit. These conversations were had before there was a YouTube. These conversations were had before there was a fucking Internet. Pick up a book as the originator of the core ideas. These core ideas existed way before you, way before you. You didn't come. You didn't come up with these ideas out of willy nilly. OK, you heard them from somewhere. Generational wealth has been around a long time. Hell, they were talking about generational wealth back in the uh, 18th century, but they were talking about it from aristocrats. So I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> OK, I really don't. Generational wealth amongst black people is not new. And, and I'm saying these guys have always been around these sort of, you know, it's not about the money, guys. These guys have always lingered around and they want to, you know, come through with this moral high road. I got the sweet twinkle of Christ. I'm looking at my third eye, Hotep and all this other stuff. And, and they want to push the idea. Many of them because they're past their prime or they're past where they could actually make a, a, a financial difference. They're past the years of going to college where they didn't have the support because their father wasn't in the position or present. You know, and so and so, you know, where you have other people whose parents did the right thing, you know, they're playing catch up to somebody else's starting point. And they, and, they, and, they, and they don't like they don't like the fact that that pretty much says that they can only go so far in life. I'm saying realistically, realistically. That's why it's so important to lay down the proper foundations for future generations. So that we don't have this every exactly that's what we're saying but the thing is you you're going off half cocked as usual because there there's plenty of middle class people it, it, coming from the 70s they had money how come it failed you had plenty of educated women right now they're educated how come it's failing because you think it's about money it's about structure and they've proven that over and over again and about the money it's about the structure because if that was the case uh, most of your white people wouldn't have gone to college either because they ain't had that much money. And most of you, most of the white folks, uh, you talk to most of the white folks, uh, they went to college on the strength. They had to get to uh, they had to get uh, scholarships. They had to take loans just like everybody else. He had HBCUs forever, forever. They sent kids, poor kids from humble backgrounds to college to get a degree. Where did that come from? Is your society makes a decision to educate its children or not. There's a reason that China pushes out a, a million uh, uh, programmers and a million engineers and million business people, right? It's not about the money. 
It's about the structure. It's about the structure of the society. You got tons of people uh, borrow tons of money. Forty uh, percent of your people have degrees now. W how's that benefiting you? How's that benefiting you? It's easier to go to college than it ever was. When I w basically when I was a kid, I was going to college. I'm an old dude. Only ten percent of the kids ever made it. Ten percent ever made it to four year college. Sometimes it was money. Sometimes it wasn't. I had a whole bunch of poor kids that didn't. That that did make it. I had a whole bunch of kids that had money that dropped out. It's about the structure about the structure of how you build your society black boys don't fail because of money black boys don't fail because of money uh, 90 percent of black boys are not in poverty how come in, in baltimore how come they fail i don't know what the percentage is in philadelphia i'm sure it's not much higher there's plenty of middle class people in philadelphia it's not about the money because they're not prepared that's the biggest reason that in fact the hell my chemistry teacher told me that back when i was in high school most kids drop out because they're not prepared to be there in the first place and now that you're pushing kids that are ill prepared, that that where you've dumbed down the educational system, there are even more kids that are not prepared to actually be there. They actually drop out even faster. In fact, a lot of kids don't even go because they're not prepared. Because your educational system has gone to shit. And I'm looking at it. I was in my uh grandson's um uh, I think it was his third grade, second grade class. And I'm looking at these kids. And it's a it's basically we're in a middle class area, middle class area, public school. Eighty percent of these kids are not going to make it. Eighty percent are not going to make it. Why? It has nothing to do with the money. There's plenty of money. OK, class sizes are small. Teachers are good. How come they're not succeeding? It's not has nothing to do with what's going on in the classroom. It's what's going on outside the classroom. They found that out when they sent these kids home. Had nothing to do with the money. They had working parents. They they had food. They had clothes. They had electricity. They had internet. Parents weren't 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 doing their jobs. Parents didn't care about the education. So that's what they found out. And we're talking about how come black boys drop out of uh, fr freshman year college. The biggest reason they 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 drop out is they're not prepared. We don't prepare them. And black women have, especially for educating black boys, have a disdain for educating black boys. We've been we proved that over and over and over and over again. Look at who the mother is. They can tell you. Look who the mother is. You can tell whether their kid has a chance to succeed in this environment or not. There's a reason that Asians, no matter where they come from or how much money they have, always do better. You have poor ass Asians just got off the boat. How come their kids do better? They don't live in a middle class lifestyle. They don't have cars. In fact, most Asians don't let their kids drive cars until they get 18 and uh, 19 or 20 years old. I was told that by a bunch of Asians. OK, they study four or five hours a day. And what, what they have found out, what they have found out that uh, if you if you read the studies and I have the amount of time a kid studies is directly proportional to uh, his success in school, whether it's in uh, elementary or it's in college. Your study habits matter. Uh, your discipline that's been instilled in, into you by parents matter. You know, whether your mother shows up to PTA meetings or not matter. I got uh, I had a girlfriend. Girlfriend was just above welfare. OK, uh, three of her four children actually graduated from college. Why is that? She had no money. Why is that? She showed up to PTA meetings. She kept her kids in the library. Her kids always had books. They always had to read. They're all educated. Why? Because she cared. And that's the biggest factor that they don't tell you about education and about success in education with parents that care. That's the biggest factor. Educators will tell you that. The biggest factor in the success of, success of a kid's education is parents that care. Why do you think girls do better in college? Girls do better in education than black boys by a factor of two to one. They're raised in the same environment with the same money. Why is that? Now, are there programs for girls that differ? Sure. But but the biggest factor in education of black boys is number one, the home. Because I have plenty of programs uh, that I know of where they uh, actually tried to mentor black boys, but they had to go home. And then the school system has, has been feminized on top of that. That's the reason. The structure, how you structure society is more than money. In fact, money is only part of it. How you distribute the resources is bigger. Man, there's, ton, man, there's so much money in the United States. There's so much money in the United States. Y'all don't fight for that shit. 
you talked about the sweet t- or twinkle of Jesus in people's eye. Man, ain't nobody on that. I don't know who you hanging around because if you hanging around in the manosphere and you let one guy throw you off because the sweet twinkle, twinkle of Jesus in the eye, okay, then basically you're listening in the wrong spot, man. I don't know who you listen to. You came to Dr. Johnson and the vast majority of the people that you that you talk to in that environment, in that um, in in that chat, okay. That you said are, are full of shit. All the motherf- most of the motherfuckers have degrees. Most of these people that actually frequent Dr. Johnson's chat make a hundred, make eighty thousand dollars a year or more. They have way more education than you. Okay, I got people in that chat that come from Yale, who come from Harvard, come from Princeton, uh, Notre Dame. You know, a lot of the big five. Okay, got one brother in there. You probably know Swim Champ. Swim Champ went to Princeton and and basically graduated from Wharton Business School of College. He's in China. So when you come in thinking you're the smartest motherfucker in the room, you're not. Okay? You're not. If you want to talk business, you want to talk uh, economics, you want to talk structure, holler at the boy. Okay? Instead of holler, it's actually uh, doing this long wolf McQuaid shit. We've had the, we've had this dance before. We had this dance before with the, with the uh, Monahan report. Over and over again. What's wrong with black people goes all the way back to slavery. Before the money. If, if black women really wanted black men to succeed, they would. They don't. And and basically white supremacy is not about helping you and even when white supremacy tried to help you guess who stood in your way black women that's what you have to fix and you can't fix it basically the black community is done for anyway what are you trying to save what are you trying to prove what are you trying to prove to these women that uh, won't get on your program i got a latina that don't make 12 dollars an hour that's more submissive than black women that make a hundred thousand dollars a year been there my my son there's nothing but latinas okay he, he he's not balling out of control now did he do his two years in college yeah that's all he wanted to do he's a semi-pro basketball player now he has he played overseas yeah but guess what how come he doesn't deal with black women because they don't come submissive submissiveness and cooperative cooperation is not uh is 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 not uh determined by how much money you have it's determined by how you were raised by your mother now, if you want to deal with upper class people we're talking about a different story well, right now we're not talking about upper class people we're talking about working class people in the middle that's what we talked about upper class is upper class now if you want to raise yourself to be an upper class people fine okay i know too many phds man i know too many the doctors okay doctors doctors I know PhDs in real life. I know millionaires in real life. Okay. I know millionaires that have more money than God. Okay. Humble people. They don't talk like you. Is it about the money? Money is money is only part of it. Any wealth building idea, any wealth building uh, philosophy doesn't start with the money. It starts with, with your intrinsic value first. Your belief in yourself, your will, your discipline first. That's what it starts with. Discipline first. Anybody that's ever been rich or go take any wealth building school they don't start with money they start with what's inside first so i don't know where you who taught you or where you get your ideas from or anything else like that anybody will tell you it doesn't start with that because i've been on them wealth uh we've been to those wealth building seminars they don't start with that okay they don't start with you going out and hustling for money because that if that was the case, I'd have, I'd have gone out in the middle of the street, started slinging cocaine. I'd have got with uh, with the with the uh, with the cartels and start and build millionaires within what two or three years. That's, so it's not about the money. If, if black women uh, built in uh, believed in intrinsicness, they would have never went for the dope dealers in the first place. They went with the dope dealers because it was about the money. But anyway, man, this is getting long, and uh, like I said, he keeps repeating himself as he always does. You know, maybe I'll do a part two. Um, I don't know, but I think this is, uh, will suffice. You need, really need to, to open your books. You really need to go, go take one, go read some of those, uh, 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 some of those books. Go, go listen to, uh, Shannon Rawls. Shannon Rawls is on here and basically he's, he's been a millionaire three or four times over. He started, he, he's been in Hollywood, he's been a producer, he's been a businessman. Okay. He made a lot of money. Okay. Get, where does he start? Does he start with just business ideas? No, it starts inside richest man in babylon okay uh how to think think and grow rich which has nothing to do with money has to do with your mental attitude preparation and discipline most black people are not rich or wealthy have generational wealth is because they don't have discipline 
most people, black people don't finish college because of discipline. And that comes from your home life. It doesn't, it, most reason most Asians finish college and get degrees is because they have internal discipline instilled by their parents. That's the biggest reason. That's the biggest factor. Ask any educator from kindergarten to college. What's the difference? Habits, habits, how you were raised, what your structure was built on. Okay. How do you, engineers just don't come out of the blue. Okay. A, 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 an engineer starts in math and science when he's like in, you know, hell, at, 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 very, at the very least when he's 12 years old. At the very least, very at the very latest, that's when he starts when he's 12. You know when an engineer starts forming when he's 12 because it's a mindset. Why do you think they ch change the whole curriculum to this common core shit? Because they, they have to build the mind, okay? Have to build certain pathways in the mind. Anyway, let me get off of here, man, because I'll start preaching. Because, uh, you know, that's my response to him, man. Because you know what? I'm going to say it, Sergeant Willie Peach, you're full of shit, okay? You're full of shit. You keep repeating yourself, but you're full of shit, man. Go back and study. Stop stop, be, say, doing the same fucking beatbox, man, for uh, over the last 10 years, man. Should have learned something by now. Anyhow, uh, with that, I'm out. This is uh, BGS out, and I'll see you guys on the next one. Peace.